This video is bonkers. A weatherman was giving a report on live TV when suddenly America's tallest building is struck by lightning. Let me check that out. Look at the clearing sky across the Hudson. Oh wow. Ooh. If you thought that was crazy, check out this lightning bolt, which everyone is saying looks like Marge Simpson. Can you see why? Even atheists cannot believe their eyes when they saw what happened to this false teacher in the middle of his sermon. If you've ever seen this guy before, you will know that he has said unthinkable things about Jesus Christ. So now watch what happens as he is forced to stop preaching his false message. Have something to teach the church about dying to self, about new life, about That is not a sign of God's judgment, okay? Okay, I'm going to raise the stakes right now. I'm going to ask every single person who subscribed to this YouTube channel to answer me this one question. In all the church services you've ever been to, have you known even one that has ever been stopped by a bolt of lightning? Let's see how many people write no in the comment box. Personally, I believe this man knew what he was saying was wrong and he knew that this might just be a wake-up call from the Almighty God. However, some people believe that God had a similar warning for Barack Obama, which personally, I'm not so sure I agree with, but let's see what you think in a moment's time. First though, notice this man's terrified reaction as here he is posing for a photo when the Eiffel Tower is struck by lightning. But hey now, before I show you the lightning bolt which some people believe is linked to Obama, first you need to cast your eyes on these two other lightning bolts which people are saying could also be warnings from God. On the 11th of February 2013, Pope Benedict shook the entire world by becoming the first Pope in nearly 600 years to resign. But what happened next is even more shocking. Extraordinary day. Within hours of Pope Benedict announcing that he was to resign, take a look at this. Lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica. Even Will Smith believes that this next lightning bolt was a sign from God. You've probably already seen my video on the Brazil Carnival where literally thousands of people mocked the Bible in the most heartbreaking ways. Well just one week before this event took place in the same city in Rio de Janeiro a lightning bolt struck the Christ Redeemer statue and people have suggested that this could have been a warning from God of what was about to take place. In fact the world famous actor Will Smith wrote this on his Instagram feed. Okay, I get it. I'm gonna straighten up. In other words, it's time to repent. Well, whether that lightning bolt was from God or not, it's still time for you to repent, Will Smith, and not just you, but anyone listening, because none of us know when the Lord will return. None of us know when we will breathe our last breath and we will meet our creator. Okay, here's the part you've all been waiting for. What does Barack Obama have to do with lightning? Well, personally, I just want to emphasize this once more. I believe these speculations are going a little bit too far, but my opinion holds no more credibility than yours. So you tell me what you think when you see this footage. On the 4th of August, 2022, an extremely powerful bolt of lightning fell just outside the White House. So what has this got to do with Barack Obama? Well, did you know that the Hebrew word for lightning is actually Barack? In fact, in 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 15, it's the same word which David uses when he describes how the Lord delivered him from his enemies by using lightning. And why else is this important to Barack Obama? Well, the 4th of August is actually his birthday. Now again, just to say, I personally think the correlation between these two events is stretching it a little bit. But I can't lie that I do find it interesting that there's two other people who are named by lightning. And no, I'm not talking about this guy right here. The Bible says James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons 
of thunder. So, let's ask the obvious question here. Why did Jesus refer to these two men as sons of thunder? Well, Christ was actually speaking prophetically here. You see, later down the road, these two men would show that they do indeed have thunder-like qualities. One day, Jesus and his disciples tried to enter into a Samaritan village, but they were rudely rejected. So how did these two men react? Well, the Bible says, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and to consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. May I say something controversial right now? I believe that every single Christian in the entire world needs to read this Bible passage when we look at the world we live in today. You see, Elijah was able to summon fire down from heaven. When the king's men tried to grab hold of Elijah, he told fire to come down and he stopped them immediately. And so James and John wanted that same power. They wanted that same strength, that same ability to sort of take out the Samaritans who had refused to accept the message of Jesus Christ. And I wonder if there are people listening to me right now who have a similar desire inside them. I'm going to use a very old-fashioned word, but James and John were zealous for the Lord. They were zealous for the honour of their master, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when these Samaritans rejected him, it really hurt them. It broke their hearts. And likewise, we as Christians can feel very broken. We can feel zealous for the name of the Lord. When we see the music industry and how much they mock the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, how they drag Christ's name through the dirt and do all kinds of wicked things. When we see the laws that are being passed, when the Bible is disregarded and it's thrown to the wayside, when we hear the lies that are being fed into our children's minds and we say, if you want to teach your children that fine but my children need to know that there is a God there is right and wrong and the word of God stands and it is our final authority and so when I look at all of this I can honestly say I am ashamed to be a citizen of this earth because I believe it is an embarrassment to the one who has created it the Bible does show us that those without Christ are blind and just like we would have special graces for those who are blind around us and how we would want to help them, so we as Christians also should want to help those who are blind and who mock our Lord. You see, if the non-Christian could see the pain that we carry, if they could see the hurt it causes us, when we see little Narsex mocking the Bible, when we see the Brazil carnival and all that goes on, I wonder whether they really would do it. And as Christians, there can be a temptation for us to want to pronounce judgment. But there's one thing that you and I forget when we start to think like that. We forget that God is not a man. Man is very quick to pronounce judgment, but God is long-suffering. God is slow to anger. The Bible says, and this is God speaking, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man. The scripture also says, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Oh, my dear precious believer, next time you're feeling these frustrations, this pain, by looking at the blatant rebellion of the people of the world, please, please hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ softly say, the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And if you're not yet a Christian, if you're sitting on the fence right now, I wonder what you're thinking about. 
I mean, what does it do to you when you hear about the love, the abundant love that God has for you? What does it do to you when you hear this message that God does not want to destroy you, but he wants to save you? Jesus Christ did not come to bring destruction, but to rescue men and women from their sins. I mean, some of you, you watch my videos week after week, and yet you still have not made a decision for Christ. You still have not yet come to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive this forgiveness. Because today, Jesus holds out his arms and he wants to draw you gently to himself. He wants to draw you with bands of love, with cords of gentleness. And the question you should be asking yourself is this, why did Jesus Christ stay on the cross? You know that he had a whole host of angels that with one click of the fingers, he could have commanded to bring him down off that cross. So why did he stay on the cross? Why did he endure the nails, the crown of thorns, the spit, the scourging, the, the mockery? Why did Christ stay on that cross? There was one reason and one reason alone. It was love that held him there. It was love that he had for you because he knew that the cross was the only way for you to be forgiven. He knew that his blood was the only thing which will scrub away your sins, which will give you a new start, a fresh beginning. And I also believe that it was love that rose the Lord Jesus Christ back from the dead. After he died and he was put in that tomb, I believe in love. The power of God raised him back to life. So now he can stand there in front of you. Jesus Christ is alive. The risen Lord can hold out his arms in love and invite you to come and receive this forgiveness. And so the question needs to be asked, will you come? Will this be the day after all the messages you've heard, after the many times I've preached this gospel to you, will today be the day you come and receive Jesus Christ? Or will you choose destruction? Like the Samaritans, you have a choice to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And are you going to choose destruction or life? Because you do know there is actually a day when mercy will be cut off. If your whole life you've spent it saying, no, 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 I do not want you, Lord Jesus Christ. No, I, I do not want you. Well, when you stand before him, he'll say, that's fine. I respect your decision. Spend eternity apart from me. Friends, please, please do not be the man or the woman who is quite contented to stay in their grave when Jesus would have emptied it, when Jesus would have brought you out of your sin and saved you. Be the wise man or the wise woman who sees a good thing and knows it when it hits them right in the face, that forgiveness of sins and the love of God can be right now yours and you can receive it. And you know, when all the world passes away, you have God and God still loves me, a sinner like me. Did you know that the Bible talks about a fallen angel, an angel which fell like lightning from heaven? Well, if you think you can handle the truth about this angel and about the music industry, watch this video right now.